Hey, now it's uh, my turn, so I don't think that I have to introduce myself. The name, the name is on the screen. Uh, the talk is going to be quite different. In some sense, it's uh, some, uh, not all the things that I wanted to say at uh, the last RQI after a very interesting talk of Jonathan Oppenheim, uh, when I actually had to plead, uh, uh, you know, like the pleaded court that I cannot recall. Uh, I pleaded that I cannot be any certain anymore. Uh, now I'm slightly more certain, and uh, that's why I would like to share my doubt about quantum classical hybrids uh, with you here today. So, well, part is also naked self-promotion. Uh, Rob Mann talked me into writing uh, this article, uh, review article on classical quantum hybrids for uh, the forthcoming uh, edition of the Encyclopedia of Mathematical Physics. Uh, so I'm going to borrow references from it, and that means uh, if you want to see the original references, go there or go to the references that I cite. Let me start from the reasons. Why do we want quantum classical hybrids? Uh, one reason is that uh, it's just an effective description. Uh, say classical mechanic mechanics is hard, quantum mechanics is even harder, so if you want to simulate uh, and describe um, experiments in which we have widely different scales where, at least for part of the subsystem, uh, classical description is adequate. It's better to use it simply because otherwise we cannot solve almost anything, including even stern gerloff experiment. From the point of view of quantum fundamentalists, that's very important if we believe or accept in some form worse premise about classical experiments and classical equipment and classical language, we need to convert whatever we do, whatever is the true theory, into the classical language. And it would be nice just to have a com ma consistent mathematical uh, description, even if it's just a cover story from how we get quantum world to classical uh, results. And again, at least in principle, it's Definitely conceivable that, for example, uh, general relativity, uh, deep down there, it's classical theory. Uh, I have to admit, I don't believe in it, but beliefs, this is not what is important in physics. So if we want to look at it from a theoretical perspective, we have to try to write up various classical theories and take them to the beta end. Uh, let me remind you, well, not so much about classical mechanics, but more about notation. So, well, we have uh, algebra of Poisson brackets. Um, they satisfy two very important rules, which are basically almost intuitive once you begin to play with them for a while. Uh, Leibniz rule of deriv uh, or derivative and uh, Jacobi identity. If we have uh, functions on the phase space, those uh, are the way to propagate them. Uh, functions of uh, all the positions and all the momenta, and now uh, classical systems, or would be classical systems, their generalized positions are x, generalized momenta are k's. Uh, now states, Liouville density, classical probability distributions on the phase space, the normalized expectation of all the observables, which are also functions on space space, I just standard expectation values with whatever is the appropriate measure, whether it's dx, dk, or something more exotic if our phase space is more exotic. Uh, and uh, we have the evolution equation, uh, Liouville equation, that tells us how uh, Liouville density evolves. And just a quick reminder, pure states in uh, classical theory are just delta distributions in position and momentum uh, on the phase space. Another reminder, quantum mechanics, uh, again, from the point of view of algebras, we do, uh, we can, do have a commuting product, uh, uh, labeled here by a circle. Uh, we also, well, I adapted, I was sort of converted into use of quantum Poisson brackets, simply because many expressions that look very much more like classical and uh, questions about transition from quantum to classical are slightly clearer. So we take quantum commutator divided by I H bar, and that's quantum Poisson bracket. We have Heisenberg picture. Uh, again, states, which are 
described, let's say, by density operators. Evolution of the density operator of a closed system is given by its uh, Hamiltonian. Uh, so, from algebraic, algebraic perspective, probably a hallmark of differences between quantum and classical theory is that, yeah, we have Poisson bracket, yeah, we have a commuting product. You know, there, you know about free lunch theory, that there is no such thing as a free lunch. So we have commutative product, which is not associated. We have things h bar squared popping up here. Algebras are different. Okay, now what do we want from hybrid dynamics? Uh, well, perhaps at least minimal consistency. We want uh, this uh, hybrid system split into classical and quantum systems if there is no interaction. We want, with or without splitting, that marginal positive probability distributions for classical states, and we have valid uh, density operator for quantum state. Uh, now, again, we want each sector individually to behave in the usual way. So if we have uncoupled quantum classical system, Hamiltonian dynamics on one side, unitary dynamics on the other side, and no monkey business. And even if there is interaction, uh, if we want to impose purely classical transformation, canonical transformation on the classical side, and uh, say quantum unitary transformations on the quantum side, if we have our hybrid scheme, this still should be possible. All right, now, what else do we want? Uh, we want consistency with other physics. It uh, looks a bit like pointless or trivial list of requirements, but actually it's surprisingly strong. So we want our hybrids to satisfy the standard conservation laws if they're applicable in general. Uh, we want to consider energy to be conserved if what we describe is a closed system. We don't want superluminal communication. We don't want a violation of the second law of thermodynamics, or at least, uh, if we're so bold, then we, that's, that's a testable prediction that we can violate second law of thermodynamics and hope, and, well, I don't think that people are as bold as to actively promote it as a feature of a theory and not as a bug. Uh, what else we want? We really want honest, good back reaction from classical to quantum system. And that means we want quantum system to get somehow entangled with the classical one. We don't want purity of a quantum system to be constant. Uh, can I just question on the, um, the no interaction case splitting into classical and quantum? Yeah. So what if you have like a, a super selection rule, say with, you know, you can't have superpositions that even in odd parity fermionic sectors. But on the classical side, you know, fermions have mass, so they can have states associated to them. Oh, that's fine. So it, so so it, it doesn't mean the state has to separate into two. No, 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 no. It could no. be direct sums. Of yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It's just okay. so long as you look at only if you declare that, okay, now entire system is classical, you are back to the rules of uh, whatever is appropriate for classical system. If you want, if you want classical fermions, and it's only classical fermions, your scheme should spit out the results which you get in the standard analysis of classical theory. Uh, at least this is what, that would be nice. Uh, and another requirement, uh, we want a uh, honest classical limit. So if we work with very simple systems where classical or, and purely quantum equations of motion have the same form, we want hybrid equations to have the same form, or at least uh, we want difference between quantum and hybrid equations of motion disappear in the limit uh, h bar goes to zero. Now, slightly more uh, specifically, what actually is done? Uh, not when we look at it as a fundamental theory, but when we try to obtain it as a particular limit of, of truly quantum system. Uh, we have a system which is or would be designated as classical. We have a system which is designated as quantum. And essentially, we perform a classical limit, or at least we hand wave our way to the classical limit, 
in one of the systems. Basically, uh, h bar 1 is go goes to 0, while h bar 2 is still the h bar. Now, most of those rules uh, appeared in uh, the paper of Boucher and Prussian uh, in 1988, where they were trying to systematically just summarize the rules with which people play with inflation and uh, other cosmological scenarios in which uh, uh, back reaction is co was constantly invoked, but not, uh, at least not very well uh, labeled. Uh, now, let me introduce a little bit of a roadmap, um, and because I'm not entirely sure that I will be able to present everything, uh, once this roadmap is clear, we can stop and jump to the conclusion almost at uh, every moment. Broadly speaking, what we have are two groups of theories. Now, there are more, but broadly, we can have, a, say, Hamiltonian or unitary uh, hybrid uh, models and the basic premise which I haven't specified as the additional rule is if the entire system is actually classical or entire system is quantum and it's closed system so if we have to describe it classically Hamiltonian dynamics if we describe it quantum mechanically it's unitary dynamics then we don't want any extra statisticity we have a whole bunch of approaches and that's what uh, I'm going to talk about today for the rest of my talk. Uh, or we do introduce stochasticity say, for the purposes of self-consistency, and apparently this is what uh, happens. Um, I think that goes at least to the works of Kyoshi and Hollywell. Uh, in the recent times, uh, it's uh, Jonathan Oppenheim and uh, his group who are actively working on that. Uh, essentially, the entire approach of uh, stochastic gravity uh, by Le Hu and his collaborators uh, starts from, okay, we want classical, we want quantum, we want consistency. And uh, this consistency uh, in apparently appears only by addition of stochasticity even into the classical sector. Now, what are the approaches? The oldest, the most useful, Minfield or Ehrenfest, have classical parameters and we have quantum expectations affecting uh, the classical system. We can look at the algebraic approach. We have algebras of classical operators. We have algebras of quantum operators. We want to combine them together. Let's see what can we get. And then also as more concrete realizations, there are two approaches. We can write classical mechanics as quantum mechanics on Hilbert space. That's Koopman von Neumann description of the classical mechanics. It's very useful for proving all kinds of robotic theorems and uh, other results. If we have quantum, if we have Hilbert space for free, let's tensor it with the other Hilbert space, put the interaction, uh, we get almost automatically some of the properties. Let's pray that we can implement other properties. That's one approach and uh, almost the opposite approach. We can write quantum mechanics, at least for continuous variables, as classical mechanics. We can work, get a uh, Wigner function, which represents a density operator. We can write dynamics with the help of Moyal brackets on the phase space. Let's have quantum phase space. Let's have classical phase space. Let's try to describe the interaction. We get some other properties for free. Let's pray that everything else works out. Uh, now, if all this fails, we have only one alternative for consistent dynamics, and that's uh, the stochastic approach. So both like any other two approaches work together? Uh, there, are some, there are additional approaches. We can say that there is some combination of mean field and Hilbert space. Uh, whole, there's whole Reginati stochastic uh, ensembles. Uh, there, are, there, there are a bit more things that I'm plotted here, but... Uh, most of the properties of different classes of models uh, and their problems uh, appear in one or other. I'm just asking because like last two approaches like seems like they are bound to fail because like they have like separate interactions so and if like classical employment like combined so last two approaches seems uh, uh, okay well you, okay I'm not going to scoop to scoop it very much if I say that anything beyond quadratic 
and that means uh, bilinear Hamiltonians fails even if people believe that it doesn't. Uh, but uh, again, proof of absence and absence of proof are still two slightly different things. And uh, I think we can clinch it and uh, kill the unitary Hamiltonian models, but they're not entirely dead yet. And, it's, uh, and they're still useful, which is probably the most annoying thing. So let's start with the mean field. So our object is classically parameterized, so x, k, classical quantities, uh, wave function, uh, we have classical phase space, probability distribution of the classical phase space, uh, the equation of motion for classical variables look in a very standard way, apart from the Hamiltonian being the expectation value over all classical uh, variables, and <coughs> the dynamics, Schrodinger equation, however, since the wave function depends on the classical parameters, we have to take, deriv take derivatives over classical parameters. Classical parameters have dynamics. That dynamics is given by derivatives of the expectation of the Hamiltonian. Uh, the relations are quite honest. So we start with uh, time-dependent Hartree-Fock approximation, throwing so born Oppenheimer, separate into fast and slow variables, expand, throw out higher-order terms on the side that we want. Uh, it works. If you look at the properties, it's very nice. It separates. It's all good, but it's nonlinear. And if it's nonlinear, we can get to superluminal communications. We can get to violation of uh, uh, second law of thermodynamics. Also, you can see that quantum purity. It's pure state. You start with a pure state. You continue with pure state. So there's no quantum classical entanglement. So we are paying a lot, and we still don't have a full-blown back reaction. Uh, when it works, it actually works pretty nicely. I just uh, picked a couple of uh, slides from a recent paper by the Carpusine and collaborators uh, when they compared a uh, very, very loved love system that people love, uh, classical oscillator quantum qubits. Uh, we have two interacting spins. They also interact with the classical oscillator. Uh, if you do full-blown quantum simulation, uh, and then uh, smear orbits in classical phase space, you get a nice, interesting, irregular feature. You do have entanglement. You have tripartite entanglement. Uh, obviously, you don't see it if you treat uh, qubits oscillating on uh, quantum background. Uh, sorry, on classical background. And uh, even for sufficiently large value coupling parameter, there are good qualitative agreement between the semi-classical with back reaction, which essentially means field approach, and full quantum approach. If we take this parameter smaller, we begin to get even quantitative similarities. So yes, that's one of the issues. Uh, it works until it doesn't, and it would be nice to have good indicators that will tell us, P guys, please stop before things blow up. Uh, the only real slide about gravity uh, as much as we hate to admit it, this is the only thing that we can actually do fully, and that's a uh, semi-classical uh, uh, Einstein equation. On the left-hand side, things which are derived from classical metric. On the right-hand side, renormalization, energy, uh, renormalized energy momentum tensor for the meta. Uh, there are several classes of derivations, whether starting with virtual uh, various path integrals, or with uh, writing terms on effective field theory, or wheel of the equation, then we have much more hand waving uh, than in non relativistic case. And actually, the honest derivation would be okay, h bar for gravity, h bar for meta. I've done the expansion now after things which could have uh, things, uh, I, things which I wanted cancelled. Those that I those that want, uh, this is gravitational h bar. I put it to zero. Uh, I'm afraid that that's the most honest derivation of uh, this thing. Uh, wonderful thing that it works quite a lot, 
but it comes with interesting bunch of additional issues, starting from the question, which metric are we talking about? Because uh, GR is nonlinear, so functions of the average and average of the functions, whether it's a curvature as a function of metric are different things. Uh, how we sit with gauge, obviously we have, we have obvious since uh, Roger Penrose, obvious problems with superpositions, and that's a motivation for the stochastic gravity. And if we do perturbation theory, uh, <coughs> say around Minkowski vacuum, that turns out to be fourth order theory and we have runaway solutions. But still, and that's an important thing to realize, when we talk about consequences of Hawking radiation and formation loss paradox, discussed in any form of a quantitative way, sorry guys, that's the only framework and that means when we look for paradoxes, those are paradoxes not about conflict between quantum mechanics and uh, general relativity. Those are various paradoxes when we shoebox shoe, shoe everything into this type of the equation. All right, algebras. Only one slide. This is what we want. Classical algebra, quantum algebra. Now, this is the mixed bracket. If everything is classical, classical. If everything is quantum, quantum. And, uh, yeah, and I won't leave this rule. I mean, algebra, I won't leave this rule. Well, it's not that much to ask, yeah? Uh, well, if we want everything, we cannot have it. And it's pretty simple. We just do the expansion, stick to the usual algebraic rules, and we end up uh, with this. And that means if B and A are not commutative, we cannot reproduce all the algebraic properties in the world that we want. Okay, let's be modest. I don't want Leibniz rule. I want only restricted Leibniz rule. Then, uh, so, uh, I think Gil and Salcedo worked out a theory, and they actually proved that for finite dimensional Hilbert space coupled to classical system, if you just require that, you can build a unique bracket that satisfies all the rest of the properties, algebraic properties. But if we look back at our table, what do we want? One, two, three, four um, absolutely necessary properties. Property two, honest density matrix, positive definite operator. In a simple model, oscillator and spins, you can come up with states which will give you uh, negative eigenvalues for your purported density matrix. So, it's gone. Now, let me talk a bit about uh, Hilbert space. Hilbert space for classical mechanics. Again, a lovely approach. We start with the Liouville equation. We just write it as an operator. The same thing that we put, do with Poisson brackets, which is represented as a differential operator, stick enough uh, eyes into it. And we have Hilbert space where we can introduce classical wave function. Uh, we have observables, x and k. We have mo conjugate momenta, which are not observable, but are useful and important for dynamics. Uh, yes, we have nice evolution. And indeed, we can analyze classical mechanics in terms of, in terms of functional analysis. And it's done, and it's useful for chaos, it's useful for ergodic theory. Uh, and uh, Sudarshan and collaborator also uh, suggested to use it as a framework to describe coupling between classical and quantum systems. If the whole purpose is to describe measurements, it works beautifully. Uh, now, if we want unitary evolution formally, we can do it. If we want Heisenberg picture, we can do it. If we want to describe measurements a la classical, a la quantum mechanics with projection operators, we can do it. If we want entanglement, whatever it means, but at least formally, we can have it. Uh, we can also do it slightly more sophisticatedly and uh, use analogs of gauge theory to write different forms of dynamics which would be more suitable for coupling when we describe coupling between classical and quantum systems. Uh, and indeed, 
looked so obvious. We take classical Hilbert space, we tensor it with a quantum Hilbert space. Now we have a wave function. Now face uh, with x and q, x and k and q, maybe some other parameters if it's spin. Uh, and then we can write uh, general evolution. Louisian of some form on classical side, self Hamiltonian on the quantum side, and some coupling term. Uh, yes, it can be done. So, for example, for such a system, using uh, not straightforward Lagrangian and uh, uh, Louisian that I showed, but something slightly more elaborated. You can get it, you can have honest evolution, you can have no problem with the conservation of energy. Uh, you have, uh, if you want, you can describe the Stern Gallup experiment very nicely. You have unitary evolution, you have conservation of energy. Everything is nice and beautiful. So, if you, you can, to a degree at least, describe uh, spin and uh, harmonic oscillator. Uh, I will say about problems in a second. If you try slightly different approach, where you insist that you do want to satisfy Jacobi identity with your interaction term, uh, you discover perpetual motion, and you can get infinite flow of energy from a classical system to quantum system. Uh, so just a scorecard. The one that. Uh, Myself and Asher Paris proposed, breaks down with correspondence principle, breaks down with energy. Uh, nice gauge invariant one, it's so beautiful, but it's not positive definite. And the most disappointing for me was uh, a paper by Demir and Werner, Hilbert Space, uh, Kupmanian Mixed Dynamics, everything works. After reading for 50 pages, I realized that it works only for Gaussian states and Gaussian operators. So we do know that we can, now it's an improvement both over, let's say, my pet theory and uh, Cesare and Dennis' uh, theory, because we do have problems even with uh, bilinear entities. Uh, you strip classical mechanics of some of its properties, and then everything can be done. Okay, phase space. So, Mayal brackets, life is good. You suspected har now harmonic oscillator should be fun. No problem. Because Mayal bracket, which is a bit complicated for the thingy, for second order entities, it's just a Poisson bracket. So, if you have quantum oscillator, classical oscillator, bilinear coupling, what can go wrong? So what can go wrong if we have classical oscillator and quantum oscillator? Violent uncertainty. Violation of uncertainty. We need exist well, not existential, epistemic, sorry, uh, theory by uh, Speckens, Bartlett, uh, and Rudolf. Uh, if we boldly go like uh, like Barcella, Carvalho, Rubia, Gara, and Gomez, Escalante, and couple delta distribution of classical oscillator and honest kosher quantum uh, the Gaussian state and evolve them, then we can violate Heisenberg uncertainty principle. But if we throw in enough initial noise, so sufficiently, sufficiently kosher state, everything will be fine. And indeed, it was po it's possible to prove that if everything is just Gaussian, then you can write classical mechanics exactly as quantum mechanics. So it's epistemically restricted classicals. An interesting thing, what happens in general? So let's try to trick our, uh, uh, go away from our algebraic constraints, introduce new product. In general, of course, it breaks down. We know it already. It might work for Hamiltonians of a particular form. Beautiful. But it doesn't. So if we run again uh, equations of motion for this type of coupling, uh, still reduced to Poisson brackets, and we start 
with kosher state, so particular type of kosher state, we still can violate Heisenberg uncertainty relation. So it's there. So we're going back to the questions of why to quantize gravity. Uh, one answer is if we look at it at least at the level of uh, gravitons interacting with classical background or gravitons interacting with classical field on, on Minkowski background. Bunch of harmonic oscillators, bunch of harmonic oscillators coupling above quadratic. We can, that means we cannot do it in none of the schemes that we discussed before. So each one has a problem. So what works? Stochastic approaches, uh, stochastic semi-classical gravity. How good are they? That's a different question. Uh, but if you want classical gravity, it's still not a theorem, but it's quite plausible that the only way of getting classical gravity quantum matter is to have stochastic theorem. Thank you. Yeah. So, quick question. With this, uh, you know, in, in the case where you have the violation of uncertainty principle, mm -hmm. can you come up with some kind of generalized uncertainty principle which can be satisfied? Uh, I haven't tried. Uh, maybe. In fact, that it's is a possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. But again, you see, point is that if we want quantum theory to behave as quantum theory, we are not allowed to introduce a generalized uncertainty relation. Because uh, if uh, so, it's, it's because well, in string theory, for example, the, the, the people find yeah, you, the generalization. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, no. We said that that happens. Yes. We said on limits. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I think it's possible because actually to show those violations, you go for very special states and very special initial conditions. Uh, if, if, if let's say if your classical state is smeared enough, so uh, so so you convert uh, its density of uh, its alluvial density into Wigner function, so so it's uh, okay, wider than h bar. Uh, then it's if you just pick random initial data, then you are not going to see this violation. You really Put, ma maximize the correlations to the maximal allowed extent and uh, I'm just playing the devil's advocate. No, 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 no. That I believe no, 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 sure, no. But again, the point is that then you can say that it's not a bug, it's a feature, and then, uh, but, uh, but then, devil's devil's advocate is that all our quantum experiments are done with classical description of the equipment, and on those experiments we see only things which are conforming to uh, Heisenberg uncertainty relations, but yeah. But again, it's also a question is, what is the price that I'm willing to pay for ability to do some sort of consistent calculation from the beginning to the end and uh, have some uh, reliable prediction? Okay, so I should shut up now and...